Hello, welcome to this video where we introduce 3D coordinate systems. And it's a series of videos, uh, maybe four, um, and we'll just the basics. Starting off very simple. Welcome to Multivariable Calculus. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So we know about 2D coordinate systems, no doubt about it, right? We have the XY plane. We didn't call it that, but yeah, we have the X axis, we have the Y axis. And we have the grid. Sounds great. Now we need to graduate. And so what we do then in 3D is we turn that on its side. We have the XY plane and we're going to turn it on its side and have this axis coming perpendicular to that plane. Okay. And so turning on the side, axis coming through. And so I don't know if you can see it, but the X and Y are, are labeled on the grid. And now we have Z. Okay. Points are now going to be X, Y, Z. Three dimensional coordinate system. It's called Cartesian, just like it was back in 2D. And actually, by the time we're done with this class, we're going to have more than just Cartesian when it comes to um, 3D coordinate systems. We're going to have more than just Cartesian when it comes to 2D coordinate systems, actually. All right, let's dig a little deeper. So, so we have the coordinate axes. When you draw it, you actually uh, draw it in this orientation, or this is how I prefer that you draw it. So the the x y plane is is the one that's uh it's on the slant there. So if you just draw your general, you know what would normally be y and x, that's going to be y and z, and then you just come at some kind of angle that'll be your x. Okay, so that's your coordinate axes. All right, each one of these has is, you know, it's a number line. So we have positive and then we have negative. So here's the positive and negative X's. Here's the positive and negative Y's. Here's the positive and negative Z's. And that's your coordinate axes. Okay. On top of coordinate axes, you got to get a handle on coordinate planes. And so if you, um, uh, if you have this plane, that goes along that you know it contains each of the axes they're called the coordinate planes okay we're familiar with the xy plane okay and so what we're going to find out is that th these planes they have an equation okay um and so the the plane that's in purple there um that is the yz plane and then the plane that's in pink there that's the xz plane if you can like Wherever room you're in, imagine the bottom corner of uh, one of the corners on the floor. Pick that as your origin, zero, zero, zero. And then uh, the floor is your XY plane. One wall is your YZ plane and the other wall is your XZ plane. Okay. These guys have coordinates. Uh, these guys have equations. Um, if you're on the XY plane, like we were before this class, uh, we didn't have a Z coordinate. Z was actually equal to zero. So what's going on is that the, the variable of the um, the variable that's missing from x, y, and z that's the guy who said equal to zero. In the y, z plane, all points have an x coordinate of zero. In the x, z plane, all points have a y coordinate of zero. And so you can use these equations to name the coordinate planes, coordinate axes, coordinate planes. Okay. All right. One more thing. Uh, back in uh, Cartesian 2D, you had uh, the four quadrants and they were labeled kind of nicely. Well, this here then is called the first octant where all variables are positive. Octant as in eight, right? <laughs> so um, on the next slide, I'm just going to show you what well, all eight of them. Uh, there's the, the four that are above the XY plane, the four that are below the XY plane. And we got the four in the front, the four in the back. So it's just a just, a, just there's nothing on the slide other than this picture, but I want you to see the octants. And unfortunately, there's no naming convention, but the one where all the all the X, Y, and Z coordinates are positive, that is the first octant. Okay. All right, great. Let's keep this thing going. Let's look at plotting some points. So, looks weird to have my picture up there twice, but that's okay. So, um, you know, points are going to have coordinates, X, Y, Z now. All right, and, and we're gonna look at plotting these points. I had a static drawing before. The reason why these videos are getting to you so late because uh, I really wanted to get a good visual for you. So I've been working really hard at this. 
A static drawing does it no justice. So I think this video is going to play. Let's try. Okay, the first point is four, five, six. That's the point A. We go four along the X. That's the red axis. Five along the Y. That's the green axis. And then we go vertically upward six units. That's the blue axis. So that's the point A. Next up, we have the point B. Three, negative three, negative one. So we go three along the X, negative three along the Y, and then down one unit. And that gets us to the point B. And finally, we have the point negative two, negative two, zero. Sorry, I don't know why those labels are on there. But anyway, um, so we go negative two along x and neg uh, negative two along y. That'll give us the point that gets us to uh, C. Well, those are the three points. C is on the xy plane. B is below the xy plane. A is above the xy plane based on their z values. So much better than a static drawing. All right, great, great. Yeah, okay, sounds good. All right, well, what's next? You got two points in space, you wanna find the distance between them. You know how to do it in 2D, so what are you gonna do in 3D? Well, got these points generically, x1, y1, z1 is point P1, and, and x2, y2, z2 is point P2. You want to find the distance between these two points. Some symbols for you. Um, I'm going to use these bars here, absolute value bars, looking and they represent distance. And the two letters doesn't really matter. Uh, the two the two um, names of the points. And we're going to find the distance between them. And you know what it is. We subtract and we square. We subtract and we square. We add and we take a square root. Now we have this third component though, z2 minus z1 quantity squared. All right. Great. So you got these two points in space and you want to find the midpoint. Remember that? It's an averaging formula. Just add them up and divide by two for each component. All right, great. Go back to those same three points. I think that's the same three points. Well, anyway, uh, let's find the distance from A to C. Okay, so A to C. Subtract the X's, square. Subtract the Y's. Square, subtract the z's, square. You got this. So that'll be a six, who gets squared. That'll be a seven, who gets squared. And that'll be a six, who gets squared. So 36 and 49 and 36. So with Pythagorean theorem, it's nice to have these things that come out to be integers. It's very rare with three coordinates though to get something to come out to be an integer. But check this out, if we add these together, we get the square root of 121. Crazy. 11. Wow. Good work. Nothing too hard. Just, just introducing these things to you. Uh, it will get, it was this class, it will get hard. I tell you, it will get hard. It's going to be light at the beginning. All right, one more calculation for this video. Uh, midpoint between A and B. Get the points A and B. What are you going to do? Formula says, add them up and divide by 2. Take the average. So 4 plus 3 divided by 2. 5 plus a negative 3 divided by 2. 6 plus a negative 1 divided by 2. Got yourself the midpoint. 7 halves. What's that middle guy? Well, 2 halves. Just a 1. And 5 halves. We did it. All right. That's This will be the end of this video. We'll have some other videos where we do some much more difficult questions. Just want to get our feet wet. The water's warm. Jump on in. Multivariable calculus is the name of this course. But uh, we we're not doing any calculus for a little while. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid. Reach out to me. Comment down below. My daughter says I should say like and subscribe. But uh, take care. I'll see you in the next video.